Dear friends, I welcome all of you and I would like to raise today a topic which is very important. It's about information and disinformation. And I will give you a concrete example of what I think is really uh, is uh, disinformation and manipulation of uh, media. So I want to make a reference on how Western media cover the topic of people evacuated from Mariupol. Uh, they have the same basic materials as Russian media, the same witnesses, the same settings in most of the cases. But we are very puzzled and surprised and disappointed that uh, the Western uh, journalists in most cases clearly engage in censorship, concealing awkward, awkward and unpleasant information from the Western public. Uh, that's how the new Iron Curtain is being uh, created with their help. I will give you only one concrete example, which was also highlighted today at our ARIA formula meeting in the United Nations Security Council. On May 2, a group of journalists from many countries interviewed a group of evacuees from Azovstal steel plant. One of them, Natalia Usmanova, was very vocal and emotional. That's why she appeared in many footages. For example, she spoke with Reuters and this news agency published a short report with video reel at its website. Here is the screenshot of this report. I will first read what Reuters journalist relayed from her interview. So, Natalia Usmanova felt her heart would stop. She was so terrified as Russian bombs rained down on Mariupol, sprinkling her with concrete dust. I feared that the bunker would not withstand it. I had terrible fear, Usmanova said. Another quote. We didn't see the sun for so long, she said. She also recalled the lack of oxygen in the shelters and the fear that had gripped the lives of people hunkered down there. Usmanova said she joked with her husband on the bus that they would no longer have to go to the lavatory with a torch. And the last quote. You just can't imagine what we have been through. The terror, Usmanova said. I lived there, worked there all my life, but what we saw there was just terrible. And now let's watch this video reel that Reuters published on its website. In March, people initially there were around 50 people in our bomb shelter, and there were about 40 in the neighboring one. There were two of them placed like this, department number one and two bomb shelters. Roughly in March, people started leaving. It happened at the end of March. Maybe in April, people started to get out. Some of them got out. The shelling was so strong and it kept hitting near us. At the exit of the bomb shelter, at the top of the steps, you could breathe. There wasn't enough oxygen inside. I was afraid to even walk out and breathe some fresh air. I was afraid to stick my nose out. We came there by our own free will as factory workers to save ourselves. When we understood that it was getting closer to us, we got more and more scared and we tried to leave. We knew about the humanitarian corridors and we knew about the evacuation. We were not just let out. And when the shells started landing here, I thought my heart was going to stop and that I wouldn't survive. So, dear friends, what impression do you get from this coverage? I think that the conclusion is quite obvious. Natalia Usmanova was terrified, frightened by Russian strikes. She must be hating Russia for what it did to Ukraine. And thank God it, she is safe and now can go back to Ukraine. But reality is that Reuters heavily censored what she said in, in fact. So let's watch the remaining part of Natalia's account that was shown in full on Russian TV. Украина, как 
сами так поступили. Потому что, ну, я считаю, это тоже их вина в том, что они не договорились, правильно, не решили мирным путем этот конфликт изначально. Вот у меня вопрос, почему людей задержали в городе? То есть вы уже понимаете, начался обстрел, хотя мэр первый уехал из города. Мэр уехал, покинул город, а людей зажали в кольце, и стояла украинская армия, которая просто народ, обычное население, детей стояло, больных не выпускали. Спрашивается, почему, зачем, за что? So. Dear friends, it's hard to comment such a shameless manipulation. How will Western viewers learn the truth, especially when Russian TV channels are banned in your countries? Uh, who is spreading propaganda there? I think you can make a judgment uh, by yourselves. And I really am very disappointed with Reuters. I think this is the lowest standards of journalism. You're supposed to promote freedom of speech and access to information but you, choose, you chose the job of becoming soldiers of information war against Russia. I also have to note that the Spiegel magazine from Germany uh, tried to publish extended version of interview with Natalia Vismanova for three minutes, this reel uh, was long, and after several hours decided to delete it. And I think that uh, there are no doubts why they did it. So here is the link uh, to our ARIA formula uh, meeting on disinformation uh, in the context of Russian military operation uh, in Ukraine and the crimes that are committed and were committed by Ukrainian military and paramilitary detachments. Uh, you are very much welcome to follow this link. And stay tuned, there is more to come.